International Chairman of the Koch Movement, Rabbi Meir Kahana. Prophet Ezekiel, in one of the great chapters of the Bible, speaks in God's name and he says the following. When I bring a sword upon the land, and the people of the land shall choose a man and set him for their watchman. When he see the sword come upon the land, he shall blow the shofar of the trumpet and warn the people. In every generation, the Jew is commanded to be the watchman, to see the sword come upon his people, and to blow the shofar and, and to warn them, to warn them of the danger. And it is not easy to be a watchman for the Jewish people. For the very same prophet, Ezekiel, Yechazkel, when he was chosen to be a prophet, God said to him, they are a stubborn people and stiff-hearted. And they will not listen to you, for they do not listen to me. But whether they hear or whether they will not hear, speak unto them. Each of us is a watchman. Each of us is commanded to feel the pain of his people and to cry out the truth. Though we be pelted with rocks and with defamation rather than with dollars, Say the truth and save the Jews from themselves. For in the end, the Gentile was never the great enemy of the Jewish people. It was always the Jew. And that is to this day the tragedy. There is no Arab problem in Israel. There is only a Jewish one. We have taken a dream and turned it into a nightmare. We've taken a vision and turned it into an ordinary thing. We've taken pride and turned it in, in, into guilt, guilt, guilt. We are victims of shepherds, Jewish leaders, who for decades upon decades upon decades and until this very day destroy the Jewish people. It was more than 20 years ago that I founded the Jewish Defense League. And from the first moment, the cry of the JDL as the watchman was to warn against the Jewish leaders who had done so much to destroy us. The Holocaust in, in our days has become almost the touchstone of Judaism. college courses, sermons, holocaust memorials. And the Jew takes almost a perverse pleasure in the holocaust about how the non-Jewish world was guilty and this was guilty and this was guilty. The Vatican didn't help and the British didn't help and Roosevelt didn't help and it's a tremendous pleasure 
from talking about what the non-Jews did and didn't do to us or for us. That is not the lesson of the Holocaust. That the Vatican didn't help Jews, that is the lesson. You expected them, them too. 100,000 Christians have died in Lebanon. Where was the Vatican to help Christians? So you want them to help Jews? I'm never disappointed at the non-Jewish world because I never expect anything from them. The lesson of the Holocaust is not that non-Jews didn't help Jews. The lesson of the Holocaust, the tragedy of the Holocaust, is that Jews did not help Jews. That Jewish leaders did not help Jews. That the same American Jewish groups that still pollute Jewish life the same federations and the same American Jewish Congresses and the American Jewish committees and all the rest sat in the, in the 1940s in this country and knew that a Holocaust was taking place. It's a lie when they say we didn't know. They knew as early as 1942, three years before the Holocaust ended, they knew that a Holocaust was taking place. And they knew that the Jews behind Hitler's, Hitler's curtain were pleading with them to do a concrete step to bomb the railroad lines and to bomb the bridges leading to the death camps. The Jews did not appear as if by magic in Auschwitz or, or in the other death, death camps. They were transported there in freight cars and there and those freight cars ran over rail lines and the rail lines ran over bridges and the Jews said bomb the railroad lines and bomb the bridges and put them out of commission and you will save hundreds of thousands of of, of Jewish lives 12,000 Jews died every day in Auschwitz put them out of commission for a week and how many Jews are saved The American Jewish groups did not shake the world. The same Jews who 20 years later, in the 1960s, were marching and, demonst and demonstrating and protesting for blacks and for Cubans and for lettuce and for grapes, and being arrested in Selma and in Jackson. But nobody was arrested when the issue wasn't civil rights but Jewish lives when the issue wasn't sitting in the front of a bus or the back of a bus and I don't denigrate that but it certainly was not comparable to gas chambers think of what would have been had the Jewish leaders been Jewish leaders and cared enough and instead of leading a march in 1963 to Washington would have led a march in 1943 to Washington and closed down the Federation and closed the synagogues closed down Jewish organized life and take the Jews out to Washington to sit on Pennsylvania Avenue and block traffic and pound the pavements and sing that well-known Jewish hymn, We Shall Overcome. And shout out that well-known Jewish slogan, Hell no, we won't go, bomb Auschwitz. What would have happened if the Jewish leaders, led by the rabbis, and the secular Jewish leaders, would have sat down and said, we won't go bomb, bomb Auschwitz. What would have happened? One, well, first of all, they would have been arrested, which is not so terrible, believe me. You're in and out. No sweats. But the most important thing would have been that the next day every newspaper in the free world would have had headlines, Jewish leaders arrested, demand bombing of death camps, and they would have been bombed. And why didn't they do it? Why did they not do it? 
They did not do it because they were terrified that it might cause anti-Semitism and it might harm their own futures. What will the Gentiles say? More Jews have died because of that upset. What will the Gentiles say? What will the Gentile say? If he's a decent Gentile, he'll understand. And if he's not decent, who cares what he says? Let us stop blaming the British and Roosevelt and the Vatican. The scarlet letter is on our breasts. We are to blame. We who, who could have done so much and did not. That's the scarlet letter. Those are Jewish leaders. Those are Jewish leaders. Who, When Roosevelt spoke to Stephen Wise and said to him, don't make this a Jewish war, you'll suffer. He sat and he trembled and he made sure that it, it would not be a Jewish war. Or Soviet Jewry. It's a play. I saw, I saw that when I was home, back, back home in Israel. So someone sent me a copy of an advertisement put out by the Jewish establishment here about Soviet Jewry. We did it. We did it. We did it. The Jewish establishment did it. They saved Soviet Jewry. The frauds. The Soviet Jewish agony began in 1917. Does anyone here recall a single Jewish rally for Russian Jews in the 1920s, in the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s? Not till deep into the 1960s. The ones that took the Soviet Jewish issue and put it on page one were not the leaders of the Jewish establishment. They were the ones who for decades said, shash till, that's Jewish power, shash till. We are doing things quietly. Quiet diplomacy. It was so quiet, it didn't exist. It was Jewish militants, Jewish, Jewish youth, that went out into the streets against the, the advice, the establishment. It was they who did the kinds of things that nice Jewish boys and nice Jewish girls do not do. They used violence against Russians. And how the liberal Jews shrieked violence, that's terrible. The same Jewish liberal who when a bomb is thrown in South Africa, that's, that's a freedom bomb, that's a freedom bomb, that's a freedom bomb. In, in El Salvador, that's a freedom bomb. In Vietnam, that's a freedom bomb. But when Jews used violence on behalf of their brothers and their sisters, who for 50 years, half a century, were left behind by Jewish leadership. Then suddenly that's ter violence is terrible. Once again, these Jewish leaders were terrified. What will the Gentiles say about me? Soviet Jews were freed because young people went against these leaders. The same leaders who, in the city, when JDL was formed here to protect Jews in Dorchester and all the rest, all those pitiful sub all those pitiful neighbors which were once Jewish neighborhoods, and the wealthy and fat Jews fled from them to Newton Center and left behind the the old Jew and the poor Jew and tried to bribe militants by giving them for a dollar a huge Jewish center. It was not the Jewish establishment, it was JDL that went into those areas with patrols and protected people, not only Jews but also blacks. Same lack, the inability to feel the pain 
of terrorized Jews and, and pain Jews and suffering Jews and oppressed Jews. That was what happened.